Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage in San Francisco here at Google Next 23. It's theCUBE's team coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host, with Rob Streche. We have Lisa Martin, we have Dustin Kirkland, Rob Hof, Mark Alves, all on the ground getting all the stories. Uh, exciting, growing ecosystem, great news and announcement. We're here with CUBE alumni and esteemed guest Sunil Padi, VP and General Manager of Google Cloud and also the Security Cloud. Sunil, great to see you and uh, thanks for spending time out of your busy great. schedule to come on theCUBE. Great to be back, John. A lot of action, yeah. obviously. Security's baked in. This is the Google's phrase we've heard all week, that they're baking in security into everything. Now we like that, of course, that's the talking point, but it is true. You run in the security aspect of yeah. the cloud. A lot going on there. That's just not baked in. This is actually a practice that you're running. Give us a quick update. You got the Mandiant brought in to the fold. You got an event coming up in DC. We'll be there with theCUBE. Sure. Um, give us the update on what the organization looks like and then we'll get into some of the conversations. No, that's great. So I think, I think basically, uh, you know, the simple summary was four or five years ago, as you said, Google really was intentional about security to be built in. And essentially it was more of a verb. You know, we secure the cloud. Over the last four or five years it's become a noun, as in we are in the security business. Because a lot of our uh, sort of promise of Google's IP, where we get it from, protecting Alphabet, protecting Chrome, protecting you know, all the signals that we get there, we wanted to bottle up that IP and bring it to customers where they are, rather than just on GCP. And that's really how the security business or the security cloud was built. And Mandiant was sort of like the first major sort of step function change of where we actually asserted our brand by the company. And in the last year that we've been with Mandiant, it's been completely you know, fused into the Google ecosystem intentionally. Starting with Mandiant's frontline intel and services yeah, yeah. are something that we've doubled down because who better to actually educate the world other than a front responder who's actually seen the first yeah. instance of it. And imagine if that, that path between the customer zero who gets yeah. affected to uh, thousands of customers is short-circuited. One of our goals is to prevent a patient one. You can't prevent a patient zero of the zero-day attacks. But if you had the power of Google and Mandiant together, you could actually prevent any more patient ones in the world. And so that's where you'll see a lot of announcements around Mandiant Threat Intel, Mandiant Consulting, infused into Chronicle. We also had an you know, announcement around Mandiant Hunt for Chronicle where any customer doesn't have to be a Mandiant expert, they could just call Mandiant on demand and so forth. And the thing is, is that you know, security as a practice, as a cloud, okay, check. You're running a business. It's a, a huge upside potential. Uh, in this, we see RSA and all these conferences. Um, what's the plan? I mean, what's your strategy? How do you see the, your business plan going forward? Because again, I see from a number standpoint, Google's got the yeah. what, $32 billion run rate, Google Cloud, yeah, 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 so, yeah. so there's a lot of workspace yeah, yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But security, huge upside. Yeah, yeah, big time. So I think, I think the way, so there's a mission and an ambition, okay? So the mission is clearly, in a, in a good way, synergistic with Mandiant, where a lot of security mission-oriented people are there to kind of keep the world safe, but obviously, uh, as one of our founders, Larry, used to say, the best way to support your mission is to have a real business, <laughs> to support the mission, right? And so, so with Security Cloud as a business, as we talked about, we've broken it down into two major pillars. One is, how do you bring a best-in-class opinionated cloud platform that can provide the best built-in security, you know, risk-centric approach using security command center and a variety of capabilities that any app that moves to Google Cloud just inherits all the things that Google uses to protect itself is, is encompassed in that thing. So that's one vector. And that's where you saw a lot of updates. We've done confidential computing, yeah, yeah. you know, risk first security compliance and all that, right? Sovereignty is a big deal there and all that. The other fork though, which is where security as a business also comes in is look, we have an opportunity to kind of go share this IP to modernize security wherever customers are. Amazon, Azure, other clouds, on-premises. And this is where the, the core asset there is around security operations and bringing a modern platform in Chronicle. Sort of like in the CISO, this is the ERP, right? <laughs> right. And if you can really do a great job of that core business process of enabling a SOC to be world-class in prevention, detection, response, then I think you know, we can make a step function change. So a lot of our focus is around modernizing security operations, and this is where you'll see a lot of Mandiant being infused in, in addition to organic yeah, you stuff. Know, you know, Rob, one of the things I was going to uh, bring up is during theCUBE, 
we talked many times about security, and one of the things that always comes up is, okay, you got endpoint protection, you got zero trust. Every time there seems to be a new one, you got threat intelligence. Um, the Mandiant thing's interesting because when you add AI to it, it gets to be interesting. So, like, right. so the question is, is that, I won't say those are flavors of the month, security approaches, but like, what's the current state of the art, Sunil, in terms of, is it threat intelligence, threat hunting, is it z uh, zero trust? Yeah, no, I, th I think the, the way we look at it is, look, there's, there's a whole bunch of, if I can call it, controls you have to put in place. Yeah. Zero trust is just one of those controls, right? Just like you have good hygiene on the endpoint with endpoint systems, you have good hygiene on identity and all. But you, you, do, new, you do need this security digital nervous system <laughs> that can collect signals from everywhere and control those outputs. And that's really what we mean by the, the sort of like the central nervous system of security is the Chronicle platform. And sort of like the brain that drives it is the threat intel that we actually collect from the front line, that Mandiant powers that our own experts use as well as partners use. But we're also fusing it with signals like safe browsing from Enterprise Chrome. We get a ton of signals from the Android Play Store. Of course, we have a lot of, you know, Project Zero is like a Google, you know, yeah. always on front of things. So all those are infused to sort of drive this nervous system powered by Chronicle so that we can actually control all the if I can call it <laughs> the, the touch points that actually matter, such as the network, the data, the endpoint, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. yeah, and it also seems that it's really driving into the developer culture as well for it to help them, even while they're building their apps and everything like that, and even so, or deploying their apps and containers and how they use all of that threat intelligence and how it's more of a solution versus just one product. Yeah, and I think, I think you'll hear this with generally the ecosystem in general is how security is evolving from a state of, you know, technologies and products or even solutions up to a state of outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. And an example of that is the following. People always talk about, oh, I've got a security solution that covers my enterprise and other areas, but what's unique in a security solution if you were only on cloud, I'll give you one example, is you can actually do what you just said, which is not only can you detect things, not only can you remediate, you know, have a proactive sense, but you can burn these policies Le, you know, left shifted into the development life cycle so that the developers are, whether by, by intent or automatically, they're actually becoming security operators. Right. Because now when they're generating code, the right security policy is wrapped around it at build time, run time, deploy time, and so forth, right? And that's the one big difference I would say in cloud that you can get because in a classical enterprise, that's much harder. To do. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I run product for a number of startups and it was always how, how you get the engineers to really code safely and securely and how the, you had to continually train them to do that. Are you seeing this as a place where, I mean, you had the announcement of, you know, Palm 2, security Palm yeah. 2, and is this a place where that's going to help them? So let, let, me, let, me, let me maybe connect the dots to the AI side a little bit, but even pre-AI, just on the software supply chain, like if you really take a full step back, one of the still, I would say, soft spots where you look at the landscape where we are most exposed, because look, on the data side, yeah, we have to be on top of it, on the network side, yeah, it'll be fine, right? Endpoint, so forth. But if you look at software, that's what's the IP for most of the companies now. And most of everybody's software, including Google's, is open source. And there isn't a real rank fence around open source. Yeah. So that's one of the innovations we had done a while ago, which was about, look, what if the world of GitHub, any open source in GitHub, is sucked into our pipeline, we apply our detections, our fuzz testing, and our vulnerability testing, and then we push it back to the world, so it's still the same source code, compatible, but it's curated so that we're going to the source of the vulnerabilities. As just one example of truly shift lefting to the source, okay? But let's talk about AI for a second, I mean, just to give you an idea. So let me just set it up so that you guys can chime in. Is So the way we've approached AI in cyber is a little bit more holistically, in a, what I would call a three layer cake. The first layer is, before we do anything in AI for security, we have to protect our AI stack. And so that's a big focus for us is not just governance and controls and compliance, but just like we protected the software supply chain, 
how do we protect the AI supply chain? Developing models, yeah. creating inference, data customization, yeah. pruning, whatever, right? Yeah. So we can get into that, but that's a huge focus for us at the bottom of this layer. We were just talking about that, by the way, uh, last week at VMware Explorer, and yeah. yesterday, all day, you know, the LLMs have security up challenges, of course. licenses yeah. rights, of course. so there's secure. Yeah, I mean, I would say that, that securing AI workloads, what I would call is that there's some table stakes, John. Yeah. Like, okay, they're just services like anything yeah. else, so you got to have good IAM controls, you got to have good data governance and all. But there's also a more deeper nuance. The deeper nuance is the threat landscape can be fundamentally changed if actors use AI to yeah. obfuscate the classical threat, you know, attack landscape that they currently have, right? So part of our securing AI workloads is to actually say, hey, can somebody use our AI stack to actually break into our systems? Right. Yeah. right? A problem or any is an, customer a systems. Is an injection. Right? Right. An example of that, right? Or data poisoning, yeah. injection and all. So, so there is a team between a lot of, this is where Google is a little bit unique because we actually have DeepMind and our cloud security team sitting side by side to actually do red teaming exercises that Mandiant knows how to do well. And so that's a good example of what does red teaming in the world of AI mean, yeah. is something that's securing AI workload. So that's the four lowest layer, right? I would say that the second layer of the AI stack is, as you said, Rav, is that we've, yeah. inside Google Cloud, it's probably the first area where we have a lot of data. We have data from Mandiant, we have data from Google Chrome and all. We have trained our old large language model to essentially we call it SecPalm 2, to actually create security's first, you know, sort of LLM, right? And then we have exposed it to both our first party applications, so Mandiant could use it, Chronicle could use it, and all, but also partners like an Accenture, I mean, there's a variety of partners okay. we talked about. So that's the three-layered kick that in. I want to, thanks for sharing that. AI is definitely in your future for sure, and there's good and bad, you got to manage both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great for sharing, I want to dig into that in another session after Google And in fact, in fact, uh, the thing that, the tagline that the Mandiant and DeepMind guys have is AI, with AI, good actors can do more good, bad actors can do way more worse <laughs> things, right? <laughs> exactly. So that's the motor yeah, inside. Totally, there. and it's, a, it's going to be yeah. the same game, chasing them down, hunting them down. I want to get into something you said before we came on camera, the cyber shield yeah. uh, for uh, Mandy and some and Man, Chronicle, uh, Chronicle yeah. shield. What is that? Can you yeah, take me so, through that? That's super interesting. So, so about a year and a half ago, uh, between the Israeli National Cyber Directorate. And you can imagine, they're a power horse yeah. in cyber, in the world. They partner with Google Cloud Security to reimagine what would be an equivalent of the Iron Dome, like the Cyber Dome, for a country. From the ground up. And to do it on a more modern platform that combines, as we talked about, not just all of Chronicle's scale and you know, efficacy, but infusing it with Mandiant's Intel, while at the same time also providing the same platform so that they could build on next generation stuff like AI, the, 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 the more modern technologies that have come along with it. And so that's essentially what we launched was Chronicle Cyber Shield in partnership with the Israeli National Cyber Directorate as the first instantiation of it. And what you'll hear from us in the near future are more instantiations of that for other governments. Because the way this is being built is to be a very, how do I say, open-minded way because the best practices, the more countries can solve for each other, the, the harder it's for these nation states to penetrate. And eventually, the same best practices of the solution we expect to be adopted in the mainstream enterprises as well. And you're looking at the deploying at two enterprises, bringing that functionality to enterprises. Right, so today, already, any, like, you know, any of our current large banks that have Chronicle, Mandiant, already have enough of the, if I can call it building blocks, this takes it to the next level of how do you actually create a sock of socks so that a large multinational can still have, you know, you know, act globally, you know, act regionally kind of scenarios. And that best practice and framework is what we'll bring to the large scale enterprise. And so you guys have your Mandiant event in Washington DC coming up, we'll be there with theCUBE. On, after Google Next, what's left? Have you saved any announcements? No, there's, 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 there's always room for that, for that, but people have to wait till MWISE. How about a little teaser? Right. So I think, I think one of the big things, the, one of the big things we'll talk about at MWISE, but also later would be, just imagine the, remember we talked about SecPalm 2, our core LLM. Just like you've seen this here, you should expect major advances in the quality and the scale of it. 
as compared to what we talked about earlier this year. And the kind of applications that are being built on it, you'll see instantiations with great partners as well, not just Google, Google Apps, right? Because that's ultimately the, the way to kind of truly manifest that open platform promise. You mentioned earlier bottling up all the IP of inside Google security. I'm sure, you know, meant not literally bottling it up, but you know, <laughs> trying to aggregate yeah. some of the best practices. I mean, we've seen some of those physical security with Chromebooks and you know, it's just at the firmware level, just so much action and security kind of in pockets all over Google. Yeah, I mean, I think- How do you bring that together? Yeah, I think, I think currently, I mean, it's been, by the way, that particular thing has been in play for a little bit of time. For example, when we launched Beyond Corp, it was a opinionated way in which we brought if I can call it Chromebook level security, hardware keys, all the way to your mobile device, all in an opinionated solution. So, so one way we manifest that is in these solutions. And in more security operations is another way, right? We're actually taking Thread Intel from Google, expertise from Project Zero, Mandian, on a platform, and bring it in, in, a, in a more systematic way. So you guys are operationalizing the best of the best. And yeah. then kind of often as a service I mean, and I, I'd say to be the best of the best, I'd rather be the, you know, a little bit of the underdog, a little bit uh, humble well, and ugly, but Google. Yeah. yeah. I would say for sure the the quality of not just the talent, but the quality yeah. of content now yeah. is world class. And so our job is to make it yeah. easy for the world to consume that. Yeah, and it seems like, again, you know, the other layer that you have on top of that is the integrations with Duet as well. Yeah, yeah. And making it simpler for the security professionals to understand what they're seeing as well. Yeah, and I think there, I think we've taken a, a little bit of a, I would say, I mean, in 30 seconds, you obviously heard of Duet AI all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's AI all the time now at the show. <laughs> and cyber is no different, like I said, with a couple of differences. We have a opinionated LLM now and all that. But the approach we have taken, the analogy that I give people is, look, you have your phone, 2008 iPhone 1 launches, you had what, a phone call? you had some email maybe, and you had a browser. The first time you had a browser, right? And so the world started browsing the net using the browser. And the analogy that I draw to the Gen AI stack is that's the chatbot. But if you only stayed on the browser and you didn't have a mobile app that was native to the mobile ecosystem, swipe left, right, yeah. use GPS camera, you wouldn't probably have accomplished what we did on the mobile side, right? So the way we're thinking about beyond chatbots, is to actually infuse AI, John, into yeah. each workflow of the value chain. Yeah, a simple yeah. example is, I, gener I, have to I have to parse logs, man. It's just, it's a boring yeah. job, right? Yeah. Toil job. I have to learn all these rules. Who, who learns lo learning rules, especially these days? So imagine if each of those uh, workflows inside our, each of our products are intentionally upgraded with AI. So that's the real, we call it yeah. AI infused yeah. rather than AI over. It makes total sense makes because sense. one, it's native, you got data that you're used to, workflows you know, get them automated, and then move on to the next more creative yeah. thing. Yeah. And in some ways, if you remember our original yeah. discussions, ultimately this is another instantiation of invisible security. I said like, we are putting <laughs> AI to work invisibly, yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than something that's front and center like a chatbot all yeah. the time. It should that's be invisible, it should be just standard, like oxygen, it should be safe. So Neil, thanks for coming on, your thought leadership's awesome, great to have you on explain the security cloud. In the last minute we have, Explain your vision for the security, what's coming up at the event, I can't reveal anything too much, I know you, you got to save some of that for the event. But as you look at the security landscape, AI's here, it's going to be infused, what's going to roll out in your mind's eye as you look at the, the 20 mile stair down to the ecosystem? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think probably, a, maybe not just at the event, but that'll be a sequence, but I would say probably in a year or two, hopefully the uh, material step function would be independent of what the threat landscape is, every customer's talent pool for security gets expanded dramatically, not because they're hiring more people, but because the team that they have can do 10x more, and then they can leverage 10 more people outside of security to do the work of security. So I would say that the real ambition for us at Google Cloud is to say, look, you're not going to add more talent, the threat landscape is going to keep changing, but how do you still get to a better posture yeah. The only way is to democratize security across all of your IT, yeah. so that every developer is contributing to security. Yeah. The data is the key, scale is key. And this is where, you know, you know who, who, who knows about it. the front line is important, yeah. who has the data is important, 
who has the platform is important. <laughs> and so there's a little bit of, I would say, synergies there that we can build on. If data and software is the IP, you got to protect that, right? Yeah, you got to yeah. make sure all that's yeah, protected. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, thank you for coming on. Great to see you. And Dan, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to come on of the course, We really course. appreciate anytime. it. And yeah. uh, for Rob and I, thanks so much. All right, anytime. All right, for, for the whole team here, we're day two coverage here in San Francisco, getting all the action. Securing everything, getting all the data shared with you. I'm John Furrier with Rob Stretchy for team coverage. Dustin Kirkland and Lisa Martin are here as well. Rob Hope and Mark Albertson getting all the stories. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break.